Good afternoon and good evening and thanks for stopping by. Our dedicated team will guide you through with the latest updates and theories at Starbase Texas. to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon for future streams. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Starbase weekly live stream. Uh, my name is Zach Golden. Happy to be here with you all today. It's been a few weeks, maybe even a month, month and a half since last time I've been on the show, but happy to join you all today and excited for another um, Starbase Weekly live stream. We got a lot to cover. And with us, we have a few guests with us um, that y'all have definitely seen in the past. So thank you, Jake, for joining us. Hey, everyone. Yeah, so good to be back. Um, and yeah, we've got a lot of awesome new photos to go through this week. And yeah, it's awesome to see Zach back as well. Well, yeah, I'm looking forward to the rest of this live stream. And uh, with that, I'll pass it over to Todd. Hey, everybody. Glad to be back. Welcome back, Zach. The weather really played uh, well with us this week, so got some great pictures. Definitely getting excited to dig into it. Over to you, awesome. Joe. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, Starbase friends around the world. Welcome to episode 111. Let's dive right in, Zach. 111. I like that number. It's kind of kind of crazy that it's uh, we're this deep into the show, um, and uh, it's really awesome being with y'all here every week. And like I said, sorry for not being here the past few weeks. As most of y'all know, I do work on a two week on, two week off schedule, and uh, unfortunately, the last two weeks I was off, I was moving. But we also had a uh, some pretty bad weather that prevented Mauricio from doing flyovers in those few weeks, so um, ended up missing a full month of a live streams. So that was unfortunate. But uh, you know, picking up right where we left off. And with that, we will hop into the show. Like I said, there's a ton to cover this week. Um, I guess we will go ahead and start over at the Massey's test site. And, uh, you know, with being gone for the last month or so, I personally am still getting myself caught up. So I'm going to try my best to not do a whole bunch of repeat on things that happened in the past week. So um, hopefully Jake and Todd will come in handy there. Um, but uh, yeah, Massey's is coming along rather quickly. And as most of y'all know, we've been really just keeping our eyes um, on this whole flame trend situation, which is uh, coming along quite quickly. Um, and as of last week, I guess they started to actually 
excavate all of the dirt from underneath the the um, test stand. And um, yeah, they've made a lot of progress um, building this ramp and getting out all of the con or sorry dirt from below the actual, um, I guess, the mouth of the trench, you could call it. Or is, would, would this be the mouth of the trench on this side? Or we call this the mouth of the trench. I think this is the mouth, right? I'd call, I'd call that the mouth. But... Or you could also call that the foot of the trench. I guess that would work as well. Well, the mouth has to eat all the exhaust, right? So I think that kind of makes sense. <laughs> true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah they're finally and... getting down. They're starting to expose that slurry wall down the sides. And like you said, they're going underneath there. It's hard because of the shadows, but we're pretty sure there's an excavator pretty well underneath that pad um, digging its way across. Um, so yeah, they're get, so getting down. Yeah, I think there was maybe another shot that uh, could see into it a little bit better. Let me try and find one. I guess it's a little bit difficult. But you can see on the other side of that concrete pad, you can see the actual excavator arm sticking out from underneath. If you follow up to the right here. Yeah. Oh yeah, we don't know for sure if they've actually broken all the way through underneath that bit of concrete, but I'd say it's quite likely. Yeah, it's pretty cool to see one of these um the actual construction process from the beginning to end because Typically, you don't really get this kind of view of things. Usually, you know, the first time you ever see a test structure with most other launch providers is, you know, the first time they ever launch or do a, you know, test using it. And if they just so happen to take pictures and live stream it, you don't usually get to see things in the process like this. I don't know if uh, I'm sure they maybe have some like uh, historical footage of the Pad 39A flame trench as it was being constructed. But, um, you know, you never get the week by week updates like this so this is pretty awesome um you know one of the cool things that i uh guess they started uh, i believe last week was an actual driveway leading up to it so we've had a lot of questions on whether or not this is going to be a test stand that requires a crane or if the actual um, stand itself is going to be mobile and right now it looks like they've gotten one wall of this driveway up um I think they'll probably finish pouring. I think they still have to do down here, possibly. Yeah, there was a um, bit more to the left. You, I don't, you can't see the marks anymore, but that's not the full length of the, that slope. It goes down sort of just past where that white pickup is. Um, there was orange lines drawn there. They seem to have gone now. Let's see but yeah, that, it is going to get a little bit longer. Yeah, um, that's interesting. I mean, it, it makes sense though. I mean, if you're going to have, if you're trying to drive SPMTs up to this stand, you either have to level off all of the ground around it or just build a um, driveway like this. So, um, I mean, this could potentially just be for a, a driveway to take the ship up. But I mean, do you guys think that it's more likely that we're going to see the actual um, test stand itself be mobile? Um. Yeah, I'd say this ramp going right up to the to the uh, the mouth of the flame trench. I think that pretty much seals a deal in terms of that stand being movable. Um, I don't see a reason for a ramp like that if the stand is going to stay in place the whole time. Yeah, I, I've been back and forth on it until we started seeing that ramp. Once we see that ramp, they, they don't need any. They only need it for that because if they were going to use a crane, they just need a place for the crane to sit, and they can have the the ship brought up along the side and lifted up the difference so in order to drive it up just seems like a waste of space if they're going to drive it up and then use a crane to lift it so uh, i'm pretty much thinking that they're going to be driving the whole structure up there and setting it down yeah there there's a, a lot of interesting things about this so i've seen um in previous weeks uh a few weeks ago chrome kiwi made a um render showing potential usage for this pad right here um being kind of like a movable work structure. So um, that would, at least in his uh, um, render, showed it sitting on top of this right here and looked like it was able to move back and forth, possibly on top of some sort of rail. Um, it's tough to see from here, but I think this may be like these two lines right here, maybe like very large steel embeds essentially. Um, which you could install some railing on top of. And then I think you have embeds right here, which you can also install railing on top of. 
So I think it would be interesting, not only if this is um, purely for a maintenance stand, but you know, with the way that it's constructed, this is going to change angles again for us here. Um, it looks like corrugated, um, corrugated plates. So I'm usually, typically, when you see something like this, you'll they'll also pour concrete on top of it. So this does look like they may end up pouring concrete on top of this at some point. Um, and with that said, I, I wonder, uh, minus this little rail that's up on here, if it's possible that you know you can slide it all the way over and allow SPMTs to drive on top of it. That would be kind of crazy. Yeah, that's the part I'm interested to see is a rail system that can actually support the weight of the platform, um, SPMTs, a ship on top of the SPMTs and the stand. That's going to, yeah, that's going to have to be quite a strong rail system to be able to withstand something like that. Yeah, I mean, down here, this looks like, I can't tell if it's a shadow or what, but it looks like another steel beam going down here. Um, I think we can probably see that on the opposite side as well. Oops. Yeah, you can kind of see it right here. So I, I do yeah. wonder if there's some sort of pass off between this and a, a rail right here, which will allow it to um, go over the actual mouth of the, of the trench. Yeah, I feel like um, when the platforms actually retract, when it's actually over the hole, I feel like there's going to be something sitting underneath the end of the platform right at the um to your left a little bit to be able to support that platform fully when there's a whole ship and a stand sit, you know driving right over on top of it yeah i mean if we look at any of the other um like raptor maintenance platforms none of them are anywhere near this large and reinforced so to me it doesn't really i mean you know i, I did think that you know this would be good if you need to bring that uh, the Raptor truck. Um, so if you're like installing engines or um, swapping out engines at the pad, you would want something really heavy uh, and stable for draw driving a truck on top of, which the other Raptor maintenance platforms weren't really capable of something like that. Um, but I think with how thick this is, you potentially could even, you know, drive SPMTs on top of it with an actual ship um, on top of the stand. So that, I mean, that would be kind of, crazy but also uh, uh of course would eliminate the need for a crane which i mean it, it does seem like you know as i was saying with that driveway that that's something that they would want to do is just be able to drive right onto here and uh basically stop at the end of the the uh platform and then just lower lower the spmts down and drop the stand Yeah, that seems about right. And there might, I think, Jake, you were saying something on the end of support. I, I There might be an embed on that end piece that we just can't see because we're not flying from that side of Mexico to see in the back. Um, so, there, yeah, there might already be something there that's ready to support the closer into us. Yeah, so I feel like there was, if there's nothing on that end underneath the platform, then you run the risk of the whole platform just tilting down into the trench, which, um, yeah. yeah, that wouldn't be ideal. <laughs> Yeah, I guess my main question is, you know, just looking at this right now, um, it currently doesn't look like something that you would easily transport. Um, I think that we'll have to see some sort of support frame in order to make that happen. Um, well, over to your right, there is actually a possible piece of that for the stand. That's um, cause, yeah, yep, that just, right there. There's, there's going to be about four of those. I think that's what the current speculation is. And they'll obviously go between each other legs. Right. So they would, would they kind of go across like this? Yeah. The, um, that, the, the, the unknown part though is how do they actually fasten the stand down to the SPMTs when they go and move it? Because that would simply just allow the stand to just rest on the SPMTs. But yeah. What, what secures the stand? I think they'll come up with something like they did with the new uh, booster transport stand, some sort of a linkage between the two SPMTs that holds it down, and then the stand will balance, uh, bracket to that, and then they can roll down the road. The only real question, though, as long as that stand fits in Megabay, 
Um, I, I really don't see a problem with it moving. At first, I thought it was too big, but thinking about it, I, I just think that getting it in the mega bay doors is the main thing that they need to worry about right now. Yeah, I mean, the, I guess you would maybe really only need two of these, technically, if you're putting SPMTs across this way underneath. I don't know if you necessarily need them going this way as well. I think it's good for it stopping the um the legs possibly splaying out at any point as well if you put a brace between each leg. Yeah, that's possible. I mean, these legs are super heavy duty though. I would imagine <laughs> it would be rather unlikely for them to actually bend outwards. But yeah, I mean, I, I guess it's not impossible for that um, to be the case. Yeah, this is going to be really exciting to see this. I mean. This is, I think, much taller than the other, uh, well, definitely taller than the other um, uh, ship test stand that goes right here. So that would be a pretty impressive seeing this move down the, the highway. Um, yeah, and I mean, it does look a little bit wide. It's tough to get some dimensions on this, um, but I imagine it would essentially be, um, I can't remember the dimensions of the actual wall here. I want to say it was... Uh, 20 meters? I could be wrong about that. Um, but yeah, so I mean, if, if, as long as this fits through that doorway of the Mega Bay, I, I guess that would be the main limitation in trying to figure out if this is even possible to do. I mean, is the stand any wider than the, say, the booster puck shocker stand? Because that's a good example to use. Uh, that gets in and out of the bays, no problem. Right. Yeah. I mean, without having those other two um, test stands out here, it's a little bit difficult to say. It definitely looks wider than the ship the ship stand, uh, just barely. You can sort of see how wide the booster puck shocker is if you look at the cryopod. It's got the uh, those yeah those go under each of the the four four widest parts of that stand. See if I have a shot that lines them up. Yeah, I mean, it definitely looks like it fits within that. So I guess with that said, it, it probably should fit through there. Yeah, this is going to be pretty interesting. Um, I guess one question, it looks like it's, I have, I've, I've only seen this a few times, so that it looks like it's longer on one side than it is on the other, like it's not symmetrical. Uh, that sure looks like that to me, and I believe that's what a lot of us have come down to. That Yeah, it's a little bit, the legs are offset, not 90 degrees off from each other. I think. <laughs> it's so hard to tell with the angle of the camera sometimes. Yeah, because I've, I've been looking at this, and it doesn't look very square um, from some angles, so it's kind of tough to tell if the base of this would need to be square as well, too, or not. Yeah, the only way to really be able to tell is actually having a direct down shot but that's kind of hard right next to the Mexican border yeah for sure I think a side shot would help too like looking at it this way oh well okay that's not going to help <laughs> I will go back to a different angle I can't see it in this one okay um, yeah anything else on that I guess we can probably move on from that if we're well, going to move on Zach I, I don't know if you noticed but you go up to the top right corner and let me know what you think is missing up there Way up there. I don't know if you saw this yet. Way, way, way up there at the top. Um, keep going. Water keep treatment going plant. This is as far as I can go in this one. Oh, there you go. That one. Oh, yeah, you're talking about the water um, treatment facility? Yeah, that's been done cleaned out. Interesting. Uh, uh, my dear, would have been interested to see how that held up if we left it there during testing. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense that they would clear everything out from that side, even though this was kind of tucked in that, that corner right there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I wonder if they've moved it somewhere else. Um, because I haven't seen in any of the other... I know there, there, So there is one in Sanchez, um, but we don't know which one they used the most. I think this one was like a lot, so much smaller than the one at Sanchez, so I don't even know how much this was actually used. Yeah, I mean, there has been a bit more work done on the uh, the water treatment plant at Sanchez, so it would make sense if everything's moved to there now. Right. 
And speaking of water, we do have uh, the actual supply for the water deluge system taking shape more and more. Um, this one looks relatively similar to what's at the uh, orbital launch site, but obviously uh, different in a lot of ways. Um, had a little bit of trouble trying to figure this one out just because it's difficult to see how, where these pipes go underneath. Um, but yeah, it's a little interesting, especially with these three. I can't tell if these are actually tanks or if these are pipes, like header pipes, to go into this. Um, but um, yeah, I think the um, the speculation about those is they're probably little surge tanks. Um, and there is uh, ports for a fourth one, which I guess will show up at some point. Yeah, it looks like there um, may actually be uh, two additional. Yeah, but then that's yeah, that's obviously one of the big changes here is this little surge system, um, and then obviously on the front of the tanks, there's actual valves there as well. Whereas obviously the the system at the launch site, that's all pretty much a completely open system. Yeah, this looks like it maybe. Um like a two-phase system, so you have the actual yeah. large um, ramp and then something else up top, possibly, um, or even at the exit of the ramp. Um, definitely very, very different from what we see at the launch site. I'm curious how they'll route these pipes down, if it'll, it'll the pipes will actually go down the ramp or if it'll like drop in up here or something like that. Um, yeah, it, they'll probably go down the ramp, all the pipe work, because um, most of the flame trenches at McGregor, they've all got the uh, pipe work mostly going down the trench to the flame buckets. And speaking of the flame buckets, um, the second piece of that structure did arrive recently, and uh, so now we can see both halves of it right here. And this is really cool to see those on the trucks as they were being brought through uh, because they're extremely large. Um, I do have, I think, uh, some images that were posted to X by um, Lab Padre. So let me uh, go ahead and bring those up really quick. I was going to get those ready before the show, but uh, it's kind of busy getting caught up on everything. So let me uh, exactly. quickly. Yeah. While you're bringing that up, I can tell you that there's actually another piece coming. There's three pieces coming, and that is according to the engineer who designed it. Uh, Starship Gazer was able to actually get some words with him, and there, this is two of three loads that will be coming down. So there is a middle section. Okay. Yeah, and these are the uh, pictures that were posted by Chief from Lab Padre. And uh, shout out to Chief, by the way. I just found out uh, yesterday that it looks like he may be leaving Starbase for good. Um, so that's rather sad news, but uh, definitely appreciate all of the work that Chief has done over the past few years, documenting all of the progress at Starbase, and sad to see him go for sure. Um, but uh, from what I've been told, he will be around for launches at least. But um, yeah, it's tough being down there every day, taking all these shots and covering everything, but uh, he's done a great job of it over the past few years. Yeah, it's definitely sad for me to see him go because I met him when we were down there and he is like, I mean, I, actually everyone's really nice people, but he's just genuinely nice. He was so sweet to my daughter. He was so helpful for us to join us around. Um, he's just a good guy all around, so he will be missed. And I hope there's a tow truck company in the area because uh, there are going to be a lot of people stuck on a beach. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. I've in, even in person watched him get uh, multiple vehicles unstuck. I'm pretty sure he's probably over 100 vehicles that he's uh, towed out of that, that sand at the entrance to the beach. Um, so yeah, as far as this... Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, we watched him get one out, and yeah, he, he, he's he got that down to a science. He was quick. He was just in, out, done, back, taking pictures. Professional. <laughs> um, so I guess with this flame bucket, you were saying there's a, a third section. Do you think that's going to be a middle section because I mean it kind of looks like it the two of them together are wide enough to make that bucket I believe he said it was the middle section but I'd have to double check the conversation but I'm almost positive there's a middle section interesting yeah I mean it's tough to see it's tough to get an idea of how wide these are when they're laid down on their side like this um, 
but yeah, that's going to be very interesting. I mean, I guess it makes sense because um, I don't see anywhere for the actual uh, the water pipes to attach to this manifold. So I do um, wonder if it's out of sight. It, it's out of sight. There is a place on the top there that was seen. I think the truck. Go back to that picture you just had of Chief. I believe it was on one of those, or maybe it was some Starship Gazer, but there was an area where you could see the intake. I don't and, don't yeah, no, not on these. On this. Give me a second. I think that may be the only ones they posted on here. Yeah, uh, I may have to check Starship Gazers, but I don't think they're publicly available, so um, I will maybe be able to show that on next week's show once I have a chance to actually talk to him about that beforehand. Um, but yeah, so I guess we'll be on the lookout for a third section of this to arrive. I imagine uh, it will be showing up pretty soon since they're getting pretty close. Uh, I mean, it at least seems that they, like they're getting pretty close to installing this once they finish out that excavation work. It's going to be really interesting to see how they install it. Um, if they put some of this stuff together before they lift it down there, I imagine uh, they may lift all these in here piece by piece and install it while it's in there. But I think it's going to become a pretty confined space, especially if you need to get under this to do any welding. Um, but yeah, this is going to be really cool to watch them put this together. And we do have some other sections of this that I believe showed up. I'm not sure if this is related, um, but it looks like these may be some sort of pipe manifolds down here on racks. Those are probably related to the whole QD system that goes across the trench. Um, and speaking of that as well, if you go back up by the platform again, you'll actually see the whole assembly being made to stretch across. Uh, no, to the right. Oh, this uh, platform. Yeah. Um, if you get a different photo looking from the right-hand side, you can actually see the pipework going into that framework. It's, it's right next to the uh, platform. Uh, is this too far away? Um, no, that's all right. You can, it's, yeah, it's this. That's it sitting in the um in the shadows there. But yeah, you can see this pipework running along that, and then that will likely span across the the width of the trench. Um, yeah, this thing's going to be uh pretty intense and definitely an upgrade from what they had at the suborbital stand. I think I'm really excited for this because it's it just feels like uh things are changing for the better um you know the suborbital test stands got them through uh what four years of testing um but i've always thought that firing the ship as close to the ground as they have been is not necessarily a good thing even though it works um i feel like it caused a lot of damage to the actual ships and this is going to be a lot cleaner of a, a setup and i really am interested to see if they end up doing long duration static fires with the ship um and potentially even back-to-back -back static fires, um, something more resembling their actual flight profiles. So like, um, you know, simulating the end of their um, their first burn and then also the second burn and possibly a deorbit burn minutes apart from each other. Uh, I, I think it's easier to do something like that with an actual flame trench than it is with the suborbital test stands. So I mean, yeah, that Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, yeah, that, that, that is the good thing about this trench, is obviously it's not just moving extra testing away from the launch site, but it's obviously, like you said, you can do different types of testing here as well. Um, I don't think they could, they'll they be able to do full flight duration. Um, I'm not quite sure the water volume is quite enough for that, but they can obviously do a lot of throttling and maybe some relight testing if we get lucky. Yeah, I imagine you would need some... Well, I was going to say you need some pretty large water tanks, but now that I think about it, these are pretty large, actually. So um, I wonder what kind of duration you could get out of tanks like this. I think the one thing that's missing so far still is the um, high pressure gas system, which that will be interesting to see where they end up installing that. Um, it looks like most of the actual pipe work will go across here, but uh, I don't know if where we'll see the actual high-pressure gas tanks. So this 
could be related to it right here, but I would imagine we need a lot more than that. Yeah, definitely going to should be seeing a lot more of those. Don't know if they'll stack them there or if any of these other new pads will be used for it. Uh, but yeah, I would definitely expect to see a lot more of those. Yeah, and this tank farm itself is is uh, coming together as well. They've still got a lot of pipe work laying over here that they need to uh, complete. They still need to join the actual pipes coming out of this um, underground culvert right here. But uh, it looks like most of the stuff in the actual methane side of the farm is pretty much uh, nearing completion. Yeah, this is looks a lot cleaner and a lot more... Uh, professional i guess than the suborbital pad did so this is going to be really exciting to to see them when they start testing testing here yeah and every time yeah. i look at this end, end of masses now i can't help but think that there's probably a lot of lessons learned from the previous you know the, the current orbital pad and they've obviously implemented all the changes here and then possibly what we're seeing here at masses we could end up seeing with the next orbital pad and all these little changes yeah, I think it's uh, kind of like so the suborbital pad and orbital pad had a baby, and this is what it came out with. Um, you know, like you said, <laughs> lots of lessons learned from both of those. And uh, this is kind of what iterative um, engineering looks like for stage zero, I guess, or GSE. And speaking yeah. of support equipment, there is another stand that's being constructed down here and uh this one's been confusing me a little bit i haven't followed it that closely but um you know we do have this pad that's being constructed right here and then other components that have been laying around and i'm not really sure which ones are related to it um we do have a partial ring under construction right here then there's a few more sections but i don't think these go to that um they look they don't look as wide as these do um the um yeah the ring you see in constructed at the top there, that will likely sit on top of the pieces down the bottom there with the green on top of them. Um, and then the the rectangular shaped things, I don't, I don't really know what you call them, they'll then likely go upright on the five outer pads, uh, the five outer embeds. And then the ring sections you're seeing up there, the three new ring sections, they'll probably sit between these five pillars of... Like I said, I don't really know what you call those. Um, but yeah, the it is looking like this this whole system, all, all this hardware is going to be changing. Is the next can crusher type system, basically. Um, because we have noticed the actual can crusher has had a lot of components stripped from it that will likely be used with this new system. Um, and obviously, as we know, they've... They've altered the can crusher cap as well to be able to do twisting motions on it. Right. So you think this is a no more? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, they've they've taken every single piston out of that. Um, they've they seem to have taken a lot of other sub components off of it as well. Um, so yeah, I think this this is pretty much done now. I think we probably won't see this used again. Right. So I mean, if that's the case um, on this. Right here, we do have, obviously, 10 pedestals right there. Um, and then this, the ring structure itself has um, eyelets on it, so it looks like you could attach pistons onto this. Um, but I feel like there's, it's tough to be able to count them, uh, especially when it's incomplete, but I feel like there, if I had to guess, at least 20 of them. Let's see if I can get yeah, a better we'll angle of it. And yeah, obviously 20 pistons would be about right. Because um, that's obviously what the the original can crusher had on the at the outside of it. I'm gonna get an angle where the crane isn't in the way. There we go. Yeah, so about about twenty of them. Um, that would be interesting. I mean, hmm. So, so you're saying that you think that these will be the legs that go up, like right here? Yeah, it right. be should be five of those. And then there'll be um, the the ring sections between the uh, five of these pillars, and then not quite sure what goes on the tops of them because there's you can see uh, there is areas for something else to be welded on there. 
Um, yeah, there, there's likely still a lot of hardware missing. Yeah, I mean, I could see the rings attaching onto these um, on the side right here. Yeah. But that would be weird because I, I can't imagine what would go on top of that if, if this, this part of the structure is coming above that ring. Very odd. Very odd. Yeah, I, I do wonder if this is going to maybe possibly be like a supersized um, uh, cage of, of sorts, like the one at the top right there. I wonder if, yeah, I wonder if it's going to be a supersized version of that, and then the actual can crush apart in the in the middle of all of it. You know, and above the main area and then to the left of the small partial circle, it looks like they're setting up for something else to go in there. You can see the embeds there in the ground to your left. Rep, they all got cones on them. So it looks like they're setting, unless that's an old one that I can't remember is there because everything's changed. Uh, it looks like they're starting to get set up for something else. We just haven't seen anything that we know for sure is going there. Isn't that where the can crusher initially sat up? Um, yeah, but that's... Is that it? It, it, no, yeah, th these are, the embeds have appeared since the can crusher was moved from there. Um, so yeah, that is likely going to be something else constructed there. And yeah, it's five embeds, so that'll be probably related to the five big pillars with the ring sections between each pillar. Yeah. Now that I, now that you say that, I wonder. I wonder if. This isn't the bottom, and it's actually this is the bottom side. Um, I I don't know about that one because if you look on the left hand side, the size of that end does line up size up. Yeah, 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 lines up perfectly with the five embeds. But maybe they're going to make a ring in that other one that fits on top of this one. If they're going to stack it again, that might be where they start construction of the third ring. It, it, this whole area has just been so confusing from day one. I mean, even just when they were putting the footings in for this, it was just, we've all been confused for the most part. It, definitely looking like crank crusher related, but it's confusing for sure. Um, so the last thing, I guess, possibly related to this, we have some um, work platforms or possible staircases that are over here. So these look like they may end up being related to the actual um, static fire test stand. Some of them uh, look like we got some angled pieces right here, which look like they may go up against some of the, the actual platform itself, but it's tough to say. Smaller detail though, a little bit less important than everything else we got going on over here. Um, but let's see, what else do we have going down at Massey's that we should mention. Um, nothing major really. I think they're just yeah, they're still working on utilities around the place, um, getting things connected up. But yeah, nothing else not major. Yeah, it seems like the power should be hooked up pretty soon here, according to Dave Avery. The last when he was there recently for FT three, they were getting pretty close, but not quite hooked up yet. So they're getting ready for that, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I love the way that this whole site is progressing. I mean, it's I, I remember when all of this was mostly dirt over here and it looks like the tables have turned and now it's mostly concrete. So um, really starting to look like a real test site out here. Yeah, and like you said, just watching the changes from what they've done before to what they've done now has been really neat and it's going to get neater, especially once they start the other towers at the launch site. Just watching the changes they make, we're going to see what they learned by how they are making their changes and what they're doing to make it different and more efficient. Uh, it's just really fun to watch. Yeah, you know, I guess as things progress, I've, I've kind of been wondering about this structure over here, if this is potentially some sort of um, control room for the actual test stand um i would imagine if it was like if you were to expect people to be on site possibly while they're doing those static fires that this would be a little more hardened um i don't think this would it would be very comfortable being in this room with that kind of noise around it um but yeah I, i'm still confused about what this one is
Probably just I mean, a general obviously, office building, not to be used during testing, though. There was obviously, yeah, there was signs at one point that there was going to be a bridge crane in there, but uh, we never actually saw that being installed. Um, I mean, they could have snuck it in, unless we weren't looking. But yeah, I don't know if those bridge crane rails are actually being used or not. Right. Yeah, and I guess we know that this is probably the only temporary structure down here. I imagine all of this will be removed. These are probably just temporary for um, uh, welding and all that stuff in, underneath the tents for all of this stuff down here. Um, and then once all of that is complete, I imagine the runway will um, curve all the way down over here. All right. Well, I guess with that said, we should uh, check and see if we have any questions related to Massey's. And then if not, we can uh, head over to the Sanchez site. We got a bunch of questions and a bunch of support, too. I want to thank Barry Wood for gifting five euros, five pounds before the show started. I hope everyone is enjoying your Easter weekend, he says. I want to thank 55 Chevy Guy Steve for gifting five memberships, as well as DeMars for gifting five. Coco Cats for gifting one, as well as William Foss. Thank you all for all. All that support. Jap Kuipers just joined and became a member. Thank you very much for that. We've got Scat 1975 with five pounds. Choo Choo, all aboard the RGV train. James L, five dollars. Good morning, everyone. Sharpie, five dollars. Choo Choo. Rocket Profit, five dollars. All aboard on Sharpie's five dollar train. Choo Choo. DeMars, Canada, ten dollar. I'm on board. Choo Choo. Um, you guys are trying to mess with me in their uh, tongue twisters. Um, sorry, I'm not playing that game today due to time time constraints, but thanks for the $20 Super Chat Rock Profit. All right, let's get into some questions um, from Huffy. If the stand would be movable, what would the larger crane be for? That would probably be for installing the, the whole flame bucket within the trench, most likely. Yeah, construction. They're going to have a lot of big things to lift. I guess when we're talking about this one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this actually seems um, a little bit small for lifting these giant um, sections, but maybe they're not as heavy as they look. It can also be a tandem lift, though. There's a second crane down here, so that's that's possible as well. All right. Booster 13 asking, is the new stand taller than the suborbital pad B to maybe prevent tile damage, or will the trench reduce tile damage? Um, I would think that it's probably about the same height, but, um, you know, with the, with the trench, you're not having the um, blast basically be reflected off of the ground. Uh, right below it, so that's probably going to be the biggest help. I don't know if this necessarily needs to be any taller um, for that reason, so yeah, it's going to be significantly better uh, in terms of preventing damage to the ship. For sure. All right, uh, Jacob S. asking, what would be your estimate for when the first static fire happens here? Uh, that's a good question. What do you guys think? I'm sorry, repeat that, Joe. What would be your estimate for when the first static fire happens here? Ooh, I think it's going to be over six months, but they are moving fast. Um, I, it's hard to say because something seems so far away. The next thing you get pictures a week later, and you're like, oh, wow, they've already done all that. So it's just so hard to tell with SpaceX, but I'd say minimum six months, maybe more, probably more, but minimum six. Yeah, I think hardware-wise, it'd probably be ready within that time. Um, but there's a whole regulatory thing that, although I'm not sure what progress would be with that right now. Um, but yeah, like I said, they, they, I, I don't think they could just start static fire testing at Massey's without going through all the uh, any regulatory hurdles. Um, so yeah, I... I, I I'm a bit unsure on that side of things where they're actually up to. Yeah, I mean, I would say that construction-wise, I wouldn't be surprised if they finish within the next four months. Um, 
you know, I was kind of hoping that ship 29 would maybe be the last uh, to do a static fire at the launch site. But um, with the rate that they've been moving in between flights, uh, especially after the last one, uh, the, the most recent one, I would say we may at least see one more static fire test at the launch site um, from ship 30. Um, I also wouldn't be surprised to see another one from ship 29 if they end up taking it back to the mega bay and making any changes related to in, um, information that they learned from flight three. All right. I want to thank Luca Babnik for 20 euro super chat. Thank you for the consistent and reliable coverage. They say, thank you for that. Uh, John T has a question. What does the sign say at the end of Ohio Avenue? There must be another use for office building. It looks overbuilt. Where's Ohio Avenue? I'm not sure. I'm not sure either. All right. I wonder if he's talking about the new um, office building out there. We will get to that when we get there, but I'm not sure where Ohio is either. All right. I want to thank you, Zada, for a $5 super sticker. That's awesome. Thank you very much. Um, let's see. Spherical Cow. Here's a good one. With, a, with an eventual nine-engine ship having one-third the thrust of a booster and with Raptor 3 plus engines too, does this flame trench look big or robust, robust enough to handle one-third of what the OLM has to endure? They'll, um, SpaceX will have very likely already taken into account that higher thrust in the future um, when it comes to this uh, flame trench. Yeah, I think it'll be fine. I agree. Fully agree. Are they saying one third in comparison to what the booster outputs now? Because I, I mean, it, I think it's closer to a quarter than a third. Right. But either way, um, yeah. I mean, I, I think they're they've like uh, Jake said they've probably definitely taken that into account, um, and you really have nowhere near as much thrust in comparison to what the booster's outputting. So. Um, yeah, I think I think uh, most of that stuff is pretty much accounted for. All right. I want to thank Big Glushes for a $5 super chat. That's much appreciated. Wideford asking if they had if they add horizontal bars between the legs of the static fire stand, how would they drive equipment under it? Well, that's the thing. The um the horizontal bars will be high enough up on, on the legs. They won't be right at the bottoms of the legs. They'll be, yeah, about halfway up. or Well, or a bit lower. Um, so, yeah, it'll be fine for getting SPMTs underneath there. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I think the with the... If we look at it from another angle... Um, let's see. You can, you can see that this is already sitting up on top of uh, stands right now. So, um, even if the bar went across the bottom, I'm pretty positive the SPMTs can already get under this right now. So, and I once... don't know if they were possibly wondering as well about how they got equipment onto the platform when it's underneath the stand. Um, they could easily just use little cranes just to lift them up over the bars and onto the platform. Uh, yeah, I'll be fine. All right, we'll wrap up this section with uh, some PayPal donations. Uh, Michael, with a very generous $200 PayPal donation, thank you very much for that. Uh, a Francois with $5 uh, PayPal donation, and Julian with $12 PayPal donation. Thank you very much. My queue is clear. We can move on. Awesome. Well, let's go ahead and move over to the Sanchez site. And uh, just like Massey's, it's kind of nice to finally see this fully covered in concrete. Um, it's pretty crazy the way that this is developed, and uh, I guess even crazier how clear this area is right now. We're so used to seeing, um, you know, mostly trash, I guess, all over the place, especially on this this backside over here. But um, yeah, this really is looking like a uh, tower assembly area for sure right now. And uh, we know that there are, uh, was it five sections currently at the... Um, uh, Port, of, uh, Port of Brownsville. Matter of fact, I will go ahead and check those out really quick. So let's see. 
So we have the, the five sections over here. And I think that I may have a closer image too, so just so we can see the progress with the uh, alterations that they're doing to these. Um, it's hard to look through these quickly and find the image I need, so stand by. But definitely not that one. Not sure if I do have a closer one. That um, doesn't seem like pretty much other than the staircases, Ryan, but I, um, Jake, I'm not sure if you saw much other than the staircases. Um, no, that's they, I think the work that they were, they've been doing on them at the port, yeah, it looks like they've pretty much wrapped up now, so not quite sure what they're actually waiting on now to until they start rolling these two Sanchez. Um, I know there's been speculation that they're waiting for the other two sections to arrive here as well before rolling everything to Sanchez, but yeah, I guess it's just a case of wait and see what happens next. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, in, in comparison to past weeks, it looks like uh, they've kind of cleared up all of the equipment that they had down here. I mean, there's still at least one uh, man, man basket down here, but other than that, I mean, all of the other um, equipment that they had laying around here is pretty much gone, so it seems like they've largely wrapped up everything, all the work they're planning to do down here. Oops. Sorry about that. Yeah, I don't. And I think this one's complete as well too. But I don't know if they do. They have stairs right here. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Yep. Yeah, and we haven't seen any movement with the last sections leaving um, the Roberts Road facility in Florida. So um, I think they took those apart and started installing stairs as well too. So um, haven't seen an updated photo in those for a while. For a while, I'm not sure if. Um, maybe Greg Scott or NSF has posted updated shots of those, but um, yeah, I imagine that once they complete whatever work they're doing down there, they'll move it over here. Um, the one thing that we haven't seen is, so they, they do have the mechanical pipe work in these sections, but they don't have the actual, um, the other GSE, like the cryo tubing. So I imagine they will wait to do that before they, or they'll wait to move it to the Sanchez site before they install that stuff, but that pretty much is the last remaining stuff they'll have to do to these sections before being able to install them. And that work typically goes pretty quickly because they'll um, construct all of the cryotubing on the ground and then just lift it in here and mount it onto brackets, and um, that'll pretty much be it. So, I mean, it seems like the actual construction of the tower sections is far ahead of um, all of the actual groundwork and um, construction of the base, obviously, that they're going to have to do in order before they actually uh, are ready to lift these. So I imagine we'll probably see them sitting at the Sanchez site for several months once they actually end up uh, being moved here. And speaking of that, yeah, of it, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, it very much seems like that the um, the tower is likely going to be ready a lot sooner than the actual launch mount for the next part, just simply from all the hardware we're seeing so far. Yeah, and it's great to see the progress on these two sections as well. Um, I think they're mostly complete on the upper section. I think that it's there's still the uh, top platform that goes on this, obviously. And uh, I don't think we've seen, or do they have all the parts on site for that? Um, I think so. Oh, wait. Yeah. It, are, it already is complete. They just need the actual middle section right here. But I think they'll wait to install all of the uh, pulleys and whatnot before they put the roof on. So, Something yeah, that's the one the thing. One. That, I was gonna say that's the one thing we haven't actually seen yet is is the um, all the sheaves and the crown block for the top of the tower. But I can't. I shouldn't imagine it'd be too long until they do show up. It's weird because I don't see a place for the elevator to go through on this. But I'm guessing maybe it stops at the floor below and then they have to take stairs the rest of the way? Possibly, yeah. Yeah, it's really, really exciting to see the progress on this. Um, and you, they do have all of the other pads prepared, but uh, 
still waiting for them to actually bring those up to here. I'm surprised they don't just want everything in one place so that they can, uh, you know, kind of centralize all of their construction work. But moving on from that, we still have the uh, second booster transport stand, which looks like it's completed, and the third one in the process still. I don't think they've made much progress on this from the previous week, but there's a ton of work on the inside as far as welding these all together that has to happen as well, too. Um, but yeah, I mean, it almost seems like right now they have more of these than they could possibly need already. Even, I mean, you know, once the booster is at the launch site, then they kind of, for the most part, will end up, I think, not really ever leaving the launch site again after the first static fire test eventually. I think that'll be the case. So, you know, right now there's one sitting over at the um, payload processing building in the village and, uh, you know, having the second one, it's kind of hard to imagine them getting back up to the pace that they would actually need three of these. But, um, you know, we're definitely approaching that point. Just, uh, I don't know, it, I feel like that's like a year away when we're actually going to reach that. Yeah, they're they're not going to need all these stands for quite a while. Um, I mean, they're barely even needing the one transport stand right now, already. Um, yeah, let alone three. Also, with this um, stand you're looking at now, the there is a change from the last flyover. They did finally install the two stabilization pin units on the top of the ring, so this ring should now be ready for use. Yeah, and you know, I guess related to that, uh, I'm sure most of you are aware that Booster 4 was scrapped, um, was it a week ago or two weeks ago? Um, and uh, I know a lot of people were mentioning that, you know, they needed to just get it out of the way so that they can um, make way for all the other boosters. But I feel like, you know, we ha we don't have another booster at Sanchez right now, so I don't know. I don't know if it's actually related to clearing space per se or just getting rid of old things in general because, you know, for one, this is the last remaining uh, of the old style transport stands. So getting rid of that, um, you know, just one extra piece of trash not laying around definitely could be part of it. But I'm still curious why they decided to get rid of Booster 4. Um, but it is cool right here being able to actually see the aft section now that uh, it's sitting over here. Um, I think we have another closer shot right here showing the inside of that. Yeah, so um, Jack's last night in the show and tell, he did point out a few things. Um, so on the uh, the gap in the baffle that you see near the top of the ring section there, that is actually hardware for mounting a header tank in Booster 4, which obviously was never used. Um and then the other interesting thing going on in the bottom of this section is that they've actually cut all the methane pipes from the manifold in the middle. Um, it's unclear why they've done that already, or if they were ever actually even connected properly. Um, but yeah, it's, so then it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely an interesting one, finally being able to see inside of this ring section again. Um, and yeah, it's it's... it's Bit of an odd one that they obviously installed the hardware for mounting the header tank in there, but never actually installed the header tank. Yeah, if you if any of you have seen um, either the episode that I put out um, last or the article from the Ring Watchers, you can tell how much different this looks from the newer design of the uh, aft section for the booster. And I mean, this is far more complicated and uh, definitely a. Uh, a lot less easy to move around inside of when you have all of those pipes installed. So this looks like uh, like spaghetti in here with all those pipes. Um, so moving on, what else do we have going on at the Sanchez site? Wow, this is a really good angle. Uh, let me grab a different one. So we uh, still, this thing has been bothering me for a while now because I don't fully understand it, but, um, you know, we were, and I was initially expecting that this generator facility would um, be removed because as far as we know, it was mostly being used for the um, air separation plant that was over here, which is currently gone. But uh, instead of dismantling this, they appear to be adding on 
an additional section to the building right here. I don't know what this look. This kind of just looks like a maybe a control room or something like that, or office space type uh, structure that they're adding onto this. Um, but uh, other than that, I know that it was probably been mentioned in previous weeks that they moved over the other Tesla Mega Packs. There was only initially three here, and they moved the other three over from the uh, um, old tracking facility in the village. So this is a kind of nearing more completion as far as the actual this little power plant and backup storage. And then there's also the um, uh, transformer station back here. So this is like the main power distribution for the entire site. Off to your left, the white cap there, we finally seen that go where we were starting to think it was going to go. Um, looks like a cover for the booster to cover up the grid fin motors and avionics while they don't have a hot stage ring on it while they're just sitting out. We've been watching that get built. Definitely had questions on it when it first started building, but it more and more stacked up to be exactly what it turned out to be. Yeah, and this is... Uh, which booster is this? I think this is the hot stage load head, possibly. I believe you are correct on that. I'd have to check, but I believe you're correct. Yeah, so it looks like they're just doing a, a fit test on that to make sure it works properly. Um, but yeah, it's cool seeing that for the first time. Um, and I imagine that the first, we'll probably see this on booster uh, 11 eventually. Next time it rolls out, I imagine they'll probably send it out with this unless they bring it out with the hot stage ring on it. But I, I don't know. I don't think it's necessary to have the hot stage ring on um unless they're doing full stack testing so yeah we'll i imagine we'll probably see it come out for the first time with this it's going to look pretty weird with that cap on there <laughs> yeah a big white thing on top of a bunch of silver it's going to look different that's for sure yeah but this is good in general um i've always wondered how they keep it clean up there and uh you know whether whether not ha whether having it uncapped like this led to issues and i think just the simple fact that they're building this kind of answers that question. Um, so yeah, I mean, definitely good progress with just little things that help improve their operations. Um, and, you know, hopefully we'll see less grid fin motors swapped out in the future as a result. Um, but yeah, cool, cool uh, innovations and things that changes that we've seen in relation to uh, just the way that they do things on a daily basis down here. Uh, let's see, what else at Sanchez do we want to mention? Um, up and to the left just a t little bit, you can see the ship work stands. Um, they were one of the those, the one on top to the right or upper area, that was removed from Mega Bay 2 recently. Um, and it looks like when we get over to that side, they, they've just, that whole area has been cleared out, down concrete and all, and they're redoing something over there. We don't know if this was just used to get engines on the ship. Um or what, but it's all out of there now and looks like they're redoing something already. Yeah, that's really interesting because um, last week they removed the engine install stand, which was sitting right here. So now that that's gone, um, you can see the, the vertical sections of it right here. So now that that's gone, until they have um, those, th those workstations back installed inside of the Mega Bay, I don't think they really necessarily have a way of installing engines on the ship currently. Yeah, they do. There's um, there's there is still a stand in Megway too. Oh, um, there's one the right in the middle. Yeah, and that looks to be fully set up now, so they could use that. Okay, so that was just the second one right here that they removed. Uh, that's the first ring that was installed in the bay. Um, and then obviously, yeah, they removed that. And then there's the second ring is still set up within the bay. And then the third ring, they haven't installed any of that yet. And obviously, yeah, you see the parts for the third ring. That's in that same pile there. Yeah, I wonder if they've had a change of heart with the way they want to lay them out. Um, I initially was kind of hoping that they'd put all of them on the, in the back, kind of how they did with the, the uh, Mega Bay 1 with those engine install stands. Um, so I wonder if they're just changing the position of where these are going to be located. On that note, we, I guess we might as well move over to that area. That's where I think we can see inside of there pretty well. 
So the one that's currently sitting out there, was that in the front left or sorry, was that in the middle? Um, no, so the one that's now will be, uh, so you've got the third ring sitting up, Sanchez, and the first ring. The first ring sat more around to the left. Out, it would have been sort of more out of sight. The front left um, And then that little, yeah. And then the pad that you can see there in the middle of the uh, the doorway, that's where the third ring, I don't know if it's still due to go there. I, I, I'm not sure now, but that's where it would have been due to go. Um, and then obviously you've got the third, the second ring that's installed. It's more around to the right in the middle of the doorway. Yeah, I think we can see uh, through the middle very well. Um, yeah, I guess it, it, interesting. I, I don't know. So this one right here has the indentation where it looks like the platform would rest um, level with the uh, concrete down here. So I wonder if the pad that they removed did not have that and and that's what they're you know redoing it to um, make it like the other ones but yeah i mean I, I suppose it's possible that they could have issues with the actual concrete but the um actual foundation for this building is far far greater than what they have in either the high bay or mega bay one so i have to imagine that there's not actual any issues with uh you know general concrete issues like they had in the mega bay initially or sorry the high bay um so that's interesting hopefully we'll actually be able to see uh you know a difference in what they did once they reinstall that in here well, that does seem to be one change with that pad you can actually see there in the photo um because before i think it was just a circle but now there seems to be rectangular cutouts made in the concrete around the edge of it so yeah they may be like uh, yeah they, i think they're changing the way they're putting the infrastructure in there now i think the deputy seems to have been a bit of a slight redesign yeah this is actually the first time i've seen the um the elevator column right here which uh i think is slightly disappointing that it's all covered up like that because once you're inside of it you can't see anything on the outside um but uh, I guess to some degree it's more protected, but still cool to see them actually having uh, working on finalizing that elevator. I don't know if they. So we saw an elevator get delivered this week, correct? I think it went to the launch site briefly and then came back. Um, so I do wonder if that is uh, the yeah. elevator for this. Um, the, no, so there was. There was a new elevator cab delivered to the launch site recently, um, so that then totaled two cabs on that in the tower. Then there was the red cab was taken away from the tower, and then another new one came in and replaced the red one. So yeah, it's the the that they all went to the launch site. Okay. Yeah, so I don't know if we know whether or not these elevators are are, are installed in this building or if they only have the construction elevator still, but. I imagine the simple fact that the construction elevator is here means that they don't have them installed inside the building yet. Uh, but on that note, they do have the actual door for this uh, second bay installed. Um, in the previous image, we could see that it was down right here. And then I guess as Mauricio uh, as he circled around, you could see the second image where the door had been lifted up. So. Uh, I believe they're just finally testing that door. I don't. I can't remember. Was this installed a week ago or two weeks ago? That was more like about a week ago. I'd say is when they started installing the sections of the door. Um, and yeah, they all went up quite quick compared to Mega Bay One. Sorry, I was having trouble with the score, but yeah, it's been a little over a week since they started that one getting installed, and yeah, it definitely went in quicker. They learned their lessons on the first one, and it definitely went in a lot quicker. Yeah, I'm still sad to see it there at all, but um, just a nice, I guess, if you're working in there, having that enclosed space so that the HVAC can actually work and not just blow straight out the doorway. So uh, uh, I guess I'm happy for the Starbase workers that they're actually able to have a conditioned airspace like that so um you know hopefully we'll continue to get good shots like this where 
you know, the door happens to be up and you can see inside, um, at least for the purpose of being able to see the final, um, the final layout of this once they finish the groundwork that they're redoing in there. Um, but moving on to the back side of this, I believe it was either last week or the week before when they started working on this road going around the back side of it. Um, and let me see if I actually have a better shot of this. This one's really good. So, yeah, they have this uh, retaining wall that they've built down here. And so it looks like once they fill this this area in right here that they'll actually have a full um, two-lane road going behind this. Um, I think with that road, it'll be interesting to see whether or not they put another um, structure on the back side of this similar to what they have on the first one. Um, because basically, I mean, it looks like it's about the same area that they have behind this if they want to build another structure back there. I think I have another better shot. I don't. Sorry, I'm just looking through the uh, thumbnails up top. I know you guys can't see that, but I'm scrolling through them trying to find a, a better shot of it. Um, but yeah, what do you guys think? Do you think they'll build another engine uh, engine storage bay over here? I, I'm not sure um, on that. Go ahead, Zach. I, go ahead, think they, uh, I think they will, just to keep things a lot more contained. Um yeah, I'd say the last time that you see engines traveling around outside, exposed to everything, um, the better, the less, yeah, the less of that. Yeah, I think it makes sense to separate your ship engines from the booster engines. Um, obviously, you have RVACs that need to be stored as well, too. Um, so those kind of take up a little bit more surface area than the regular engines do. So I think having all your ship engines here and all your booster engines over here makes a lot of sense, especially considering you may have... Um, between 33 and possibly even 66 engines just for boosters sitting in here at any given time. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think it makes a lot more sense to have storage for the ship engines over here. And beyond that, I think they could also use this for storing all of the um, components that get installed after construction's complete. So like all of the engine shielding, all that stuff could go inside of this building as well too, just for ease of access instead of having it at the uh, inventory tent. Um, but yeah, I think once this road is complete, we may see them quickly start to do that uh, now that there's actually space for them to work back there. Uh, what else do we have over here? Let's see. So on the uh, backside of the high bay, it looks like they are getting to work on the actual foundation of the parking garage. So the uh, drilling rig seems to have left, uh, as far as I can tell. They've got all of the auger pilings completed for the actual main structure of the uh, parking garage. Um, and yeah, looks like they only have a few more foundation. Well, sorry, they have to pour all of the foundations and then they'll probably start construction on this. I imagine the whole thing would be concrete, but with the way that they're pouring these foundations, um, it may be an actual steel structure instead. Center wall is probably going to be concrete at least, because the way they're doing that is kind of typical of a parking structure where you kind of go in circles as you're going up the thing that up the up the different ramps, um, and that'll probably be that center core there will be the center of the ramp. It'll be a, a, a direction on each side. Yeah, it doesn't look as wide as I was expecting. Yeah, same here. I was really expecting those trailers to go, uh, and then they would continue over into that area, but that's definitely not what they're doing. You guys still think there's a chance that uh, high base coming down, and we'll see. Uh, I mean, because maybe they're leaving space for all the work that they're going to need to do with, uh, you know, constructing another bay, if that ever happens. I... I'm still back and forth on that one. It seems like it would make sense, but they do still have some uses for high bay, I would think. Um, but then you got to add Astro right there, so they'd have to deal with that issue right there. Um, it's, yeah, I, I'm not sold either way on that one yet. 
Yeah, I have a feeling this Ad Astra building might move into the other structure that they're building down there, um, which we'll get to here in a second. Uh, let, let's see, is there anything else on the uh, ring yard area that we want to touch on before doing that? I know that they've uh, been making good progress stacking Booster 14. Yeah, 14. I believe it's in two halves as of now. Yeah, I haven't seen the updated diagram from the Ring Watchers to know how far they are, but I think this is a um, methane tank section. My understanding that went in um, after the flight yesterday when we stacked, which makes it uh, two sections uh, left in Booster 14 till full stack. Okay. Uh, awfully crowded out here. Go ahead. I was going to say, Jake's having trouble with the score, so he's reloading right now. But okay. he might know on that one a little bit better than me. Well, well, I guess we can probably move on to the Star Factory. But before we do that, let's uh, see if Astro Joe has any more donations or questions that we need to touch on before we move over. Hey, yep. I want to thank Cranky Old Man 65 for a $10 super chat. Keep RGB flying and get Sunny some treats. We do, we do have some questions from Jonathan Schruck. What are all the metal plates by the tower sections? And uh, by the way, this came in, um, this question was during the port tower sections. Oh. Um, so Dave described these as metal ingots earlier. So I think these, uh, if I'm understanding that properly, maybe just raw stock for um, uh, like the beginning of an, a fabrication facility. So like if you, you know, need large steel pieces, these would be the raw pieces that other things get constructed out of essentially. I think what's happening here is that this is a, a yard for this building over here. And um, they just allowed SpaceX to store other things in their yard since obviously they're not maxing out their own storage space currently. All right. On the water, asking, can there be any guesses on what goes in the outlined white squares in Sanchez that aren't for the OLIT? Uh, that's a great question. There's just they have outlined everything there. It looks like they have ideas of what they want to do in each section. Obviously, the OLIT towers for those ones make sense. But, I, you know, I couldn't even try to guess on some of the other things. I'm assuming similar projects but smaller different stages of smaller maybe they'll be setting up pipes in some area as they're prepping them for the towers to be installed in the towers um but there's a lot they they really went through that and just lined everything up so that's going to be seen here soon hopefully all right cranky old man 65 with a question any thoughts on the u-shaped assembly beside the ground fab building oh yeah I Ground fab building, or are you talking about different building? Because I think I know what he's talking about. It's the um on the right on the side, side there. Do I need to be Go able ahead. to see the front of it? Are you talking yeah, about maybe that just may, uh, yeah, I might just be talking about the um the yeah, the shipping containers possibly. I thought you might be referring to um the speculated adapter that would sit between the pairs loader box and the ships but uh yeah that's not in this area but yeah that that that's literally just shipping containers assembled together if that's what he's talking about yeah yeah and then they had a uh tent over it so they could store things underneath it all right trent talinko with a question do you think that spacex is hurricane proofing by maintaining backup generating power for operations with that uh diesel generation, uh, diesel generator and all that over there? Um, I mean, it certainly is possible. I feel like uh, in a hurricane, if you have storm surge, I wonder if this area would be at risk of that storm surge penetrating through here. Um, so I don't know if it's necessarily for that. I mean, obviously the ground is significantly raised up from the bed of the uh, back bay over here. 
but um, I could imagine that during a hurricane, you'd probably still see storm surge penetrating through here. Um, uh, on that note, I haven't, like, like I said earlier, this has been confusing me for a while because I'm not certain what part of the facility this is connected to. I was never able to find proof of it being connected to anything other than the uh, air separation plant. But I guess with the um, power distribution center down here, um, this could be tied into that now. So it could actually be functioning as backup power for uh, probably the entire facility. Um, that would make sense, both having generators and your um, your Tesla mega packs down here. But I can only imagine that with these Tesla mega packs, you're probably not um, providing backup power to the entire facility, but maybe just the launch site so that, you know, if you lose power during launch site operations, that you at least have enough power to uh, detank and shut everything down if need be. Um, but I don't think you'd be able to power the entire facility very long off of these. Uh, much longer off of these generators it really just comes down to how much um, fuel you have on site. So if these are the diesel tanks right here, then um, I believe this is probably a CNG tank right here um, or LNG tank for that facility. So you have both diesel and um, gas over here. So um, yeah, you'd really be limited on how much of each of those you have stored at that point. But with tanks this size, I imagine you could probably run these generators for quite a while. Yeah, for sure. John T is asking, will Mega Bay 2 connect to the Star Factory building? We um, can cover that more when we do Star Factory building, but a lot of us are well. thinking not yet. It doesn't look like it will be. It might be close, but I don't think it's going to be connected at all. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be connected either. Um, I I think they'd like to keep that access open between the bay and the factory um, for getting down down the side of the the, the factory. Yeah, I, I, I just can't see those being connected at all. All right. That's all I got for now. Um, uh, we just got a super chat, uh, but I'll save that for the launch site. Cool. All right. So, yeah, I guess um, touching on the area that you were – that was just mentioned in that question. So the they do have extended foundations um, out to this location right here. And it as of right now, it doesn't necessarily look like they're going to keep going further. I mean, it would be tough to do that without colliding with the mega bay. Um, and you definitely couldn't go all the way across with it. So I think this may be the end of it right here. Um, and that leaves just enough space for you to bring out ring sections from this side of the building. Um, and, and that's one thing I've actually been curious about if ring sections are going to be coming out of multiple areas of this facility or not, or if they're all funneled to one side and then come out through, um, you know, doors over here. But, uh, yeah, it's really nice the way this is taking shape. Um, I don't know if y'all have any more speculation on this hallway right here, the, um, the slanted hallway. I, yeah, I, I don't quite you. understand. I, I don't quite understand why they actually went for that wedge shape. For because obviously, yeah, I understand that the um, why the hallway wraps around the front of the building. It's so they can do that big window um, and still have stuff be able to move behind it. But why it's tapered like that, it's, I don't. I don't fully understand it, and why the hallway didn't just stay parallel the whole way around. Yeah, I mean, I guess the convenient part of it is that once this is opened back up, you have a little bit uh, ease of turning space right here for your SPMTs when you're moving by the building. Um, I think the crazy part is how narrow the space is right here for the SPMTs to roll by. Yeah, there's um, there's certainly a lot less space within that yard now than it used to be. But there's some pretty skilled SPMT operators down there, so... I don't think it's going to be too much of a challenge. Yeah, and I mean, I've been thinking for a while that, um, you know, this section of the building right here, since it doesn't have any bridge cranes, I, you know, I've been thinking that this may primarily be used for just moving ring sections through the building. However, I don't know if there's enough space on this corner for them to move past. 
Um, I think if I get another angle on that, we can see it a little bit better. It is kind of narrow with this uh, this column right here. I think it e it's easy for things to move out of this hallway and out of the door that's right here, but this back hallway right here, I'm not so certain on. Yeah, I've yeah, I've been yeah. lost. Go ahead, Jake. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say that, that. See, that's the bit I just don't understand with this taper. Um, I don't know. Maybe it'll all become a lot more clear eventually. Yeah, I, I'm gonna have to wait. I've been confused since like the third or fourth section on what exactly is going on here. As soon as I think I have a grasp on what they're doing, they go and throw up another wall in another section. That's like, okay, well, that wasn't expected. And what is that angle for? So, I uh, yeah, I'm 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 gonna have to wait and see more. Yeah, but looking at this from this angle, it's uh, the building is definitely impressively large, um, especially with how far it extends in this direction. Um, this side, I know some people had some questions about what's going on at this side of the building, and that's a good question as well, too. I know that uh, so they, they have um, extra supports going up on this side right here, which is a little bit interesting. I don't know if it's just because this is a corner of the building that they're adding additional supports or whatever. Um, but uh, we can see the way it tapers in on this side right here, which is interesting. I wonder if once SpaceX has access to this property right here, if we'll actually end up seeing them expand that out. Um, but right now, if they do, I think this part of the building is kind of like following the curve of the road, which I'm not sure if, why that's necessary. Or, um, but you know, this is a a really interesting shape to the building. I, I know we were all initially when they first started this expecting the whole thing to be kind of square or rectangular, but um, it's definitely going to be really oddly shaped. Uh, I'm I'm going with the setback laws that they have there, that they are as close to that road as possible, that legally allowed so they can use every square inch possible. So as the road curves, they have to be set back a certain distance from the road, depending on how tall the building is. Um, Different zoning areas have, have different standards for that, but I, I think they just want to get as many square inches out of front of that building as possible. Right. Yeah, it'll be interesting. So once they once they finish this section right here, I believe they'll probably start knocking down the walls that are behind it after it's fully enclosed, but they're getting pretty close to being able to do that. Um, and then on that note, we also have the other building the office buildings that we're um, seeing in on these, uh, what is this, like north north side of the building? Yeah, I believe that is the north side. Yeah, so they've finished up all of the foundations, foundation work for the most part. It looks like, I don't know if this is like an elevator core possibly that they're about to construct right here, um, but most of the actual foundation appears to be completed. And obviously they're going uh, pretty heavy with the structural steel already. Um, was this supposed to be six floors, or is that the parking garage? Um, that's the parking garage at six. This building's supposed to be five, I think. Yeah, five is what I recall. And yeah, like you look at those gussets. When you talk about overbuilding, oh, those this thing is built very, very heavy duty. Whether it's going to be used for some engineering on top of office building, on top of who knows, but it's it's being well overbuilt. That's for sure. And yeah, yeah I, I know. Sorry, Zach, go ahead. No, I was saying with how close to the ground it is, um, as far as like, you know, only being possibly three or four floors, I think it is interesting how uh, how overbuilt it is. But uh, then again, being close to the launch site and uh, being at risk of a potential, um, you know, booster rud, the, the shockwave from that, I guess you'd want as strong of a building as you can have. Although I don't know if you really have to worry about real damage to the structure itself other than windows breaking out um but yeah i mean it, it's definitely a very strong looking structure and i i have a feeling uh, there's something i kind of mentioned earlier that this potentially um I, I wonder if part of this will replace um the stargate building so moving everything that's in that building currently into here and yeah i don't know not everyone agrees with this one, but I I still think there will be a launch control in the top of this building as well. Um, because that one side the 
one of the sides of it does face directly at the loan site. Yeah, I mean, that would be interesting. We we do know that they uh, had at least one person on site inside of the Mega Bay during the um, coverage of Flight 3. So I think uh, as they gain more confidence with each launch, they may be more willing to move their um, launch control closer to the actual launch site. Um, that would be really interesting for it to be in this building and uh, pretty cool at the same time being able to look out a window and actually you know, see what's happening instead of watching everything on a screen. Uh, let's see, what else do we have going on down here? They've also are working, doing some uh, groundwork on the back right here with some electrical work, which is interesting because they all already have a lot of electrical work going on um, just along this line and skirting along the edge of this building. So it seems like they're preparing for potentially something else to go back here. Um, Obviously, I've kind of been expecting them to have some sort of parking space, but with that parking garage, it may not be necessary. But I can only imagine you'd want some sort of parking space just for this building alone. So I think um, this may be preparing for that, but there's a lot of conduit work going on back here. So to me, it looks like we may see another structure in this area. I mean, and it is possible for them to expand back here. I don't know if they currently... Um, own any of this these properties back here but assuming that they eventually will uh, this could just be um, preparing for future structures in this area you have a shot from a different angle i believe the uh, new retention wall uh, is built up right to that place that area there this one yeah, so has it gone over yet? No, they've no, uh, it's not yet. stopped right here. And then they do have this retention wall back here, which um, is also new. Yeah, I, I'm thinking that's the line they're going to go up to. Once they backfill that, they do gain some more footage. But to build another wall and then add more, I, I would think that if they had permission and were going to do it, that they would have done it at that point. So I'm I'm thinking I'm yeah I'm definitely thinking something else is going to go in here with all those with all the prep work that they have going on, but I think that might be the it for how far they're going out. Right. Yeah, I I imagine that they you would want some space like if you have lots of um, um, semi trucks coming in for delivering material to this building that you'd want a nice area for them to pull in. Although there's no um, there's no like docking bays back here. Um, uh, you you were just on top of a temporary docking bay, nothing permanent. But if you go down into the left, just a tiny bit, down. You're, you're saying going down further? Um, no, go go to the right yeah. a bit more. Back and up and right. Into, it's in the shadow of the factory. To the left again. Too far right. This one. Yeah, and you'll down. see. There's a there's a there's a raised platform with a ramp going up to it. Yeah, it's in the parking lot area. Mm. Just down, right? Right there, that's it. Okay. Yeah, that's a temporary loading um, unloading structure that they're using. What they're going to do permanently still remains to be seen. But yes, that that's where they're unloading right now. Okay, yeah, this is a little difficult to see with the uh, the shadow back here. Yeah, that has been a question of mine is where on this building is there going to be a, a proper permanent unloading area? Um I know there's, there's obviously a lot of doors on the building, but there's no sort of clear, yeah, unloading area. Yeah, I did imagine that you could actually pull um, semi trucks into this building through this garage right here, but uh, I don't know if it is worth doing that, driving something inside the building versus just having an actual um, loading bay. All right. So, uh, yeah, I guess we can move on from this. Since we're uh, pretty deep into the show, an hour and a half in, and we haven't gotten to the launch site yet. Um, but uh, let's touch on some stuff from the village really quick. And then after that, we will um, touch on any more questions that y'all may have before we go over to the launch site. And uh, wow, looking at this from this angle, it's really impressive how much uh, living space they have up here now and compared to what this was even just a year ago. So the neighborhood is definitely coming together really quickly. And these are 
um, some pretty large houses that they have back here. All of these are, I think most of them are duplexes so that they're split. Um, but yeah, they're making tons of progress back here. They're also building a retaining wall on the backside, kind of like they have um, behind Mega Bay 2 and near the Star Factory. So yeah, you can see them forming up the wall back here. And that's nice. Uh, give these houses a little bit of storm surge protection. Um, you can see the wall coming all the way down down here. And yeah, this is really, really taking shape quite nicely. I mean, it's um, it's quite a change from this sort of one street of houses at the beginning. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, when they initially started operations up here, I uh, personally would have been less likely to want to actually live up there. But now having a, a full neighborhood like this, it does seem a little bit more um, up to date, I would say. It doesn't seem like it's such like a, I don't know. I don't I'm, I don't know the right word to use with, <laughs> without it sounding bad. Um, but yeah, I mean, this looks like a proper neighborhood now, I would say. On this side of it, uh, I noticed within the last week, or the last few weeks, they, a few weeks ago, demolished the house that was back here and uh, have officially started to get rid of what used to be the, um, the uh, offloading area for the, um, the, the, uh, what do you call these again? Sorry. <laughs> hovercraft. Yes, the hovercraft. Sorry. Um, I was thinking of hoverboards because I'm actually just looking at one in my house right now. I'm like, they're not hoverboards. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it looks like they've gotten uh, just completely switched over to this being the offload area for the hovercraft. Um, and I imagine that we will probably see them potentially remove these trees right here, then continue building additional housing back here. Um, you know, I imagine we'll probably see lots of additional housing back in this area as well, too, eventually, um, as this neighborhood continues to expand. And moving over to this area, they have uh, one of the booster, the initial booster transport stand, the new one back here. And uh, we did have some cool pictures uh, that, who took these pictures? I think their chief took them. Um, yeah, chief. Yeah, I don't think we'll be able to show them during this show, but he did capture some pretty good shots of the Pez dispenser loader inside of here, and it actually appeared to have some Starlinks on the inside of it, which is pretty cool. Um, I think they oh, also cool. back here had a new cover for the booster QD. I don't think we can see it in these images, though. Yeah, oh, um, and it's also worth mentioning as well that the the satellites in the Pez loader box. Um, they've been there for quite a long time now, and they have been exposed to quite a few elements, so I wouldn't see those particular satellites as any good anymore. Yeah, it definitely looked like the booster uh, cover door was underneath them, too, in that area. It was in Sanchez yeah, last cool. week, but it's been moved into here. Yeah, I don't see it outside, so I don't it must be inside of there. Um, so, okay, moving over to this area, they're also uh, got a nice large concrete pad back here. I wonder if they're going to end up putting more of these um, uh, small trailers, or sorry, the... Uh, what do you call them? Yes, exactly. Down here in this area. I'm trying to get a shot that shows everything in the same view without it being too zoomed out. So yeah, this looks like I think we'll may see even more housing back here or potentially just a really large parking lot, which, you know, you can never have too much parking space. Um, so I don't know, because we have a parking lot here, parking lot there. So um, I imagine this could potentially just be another large parking lot or, like I said, more living space. Um, and then I think this one right here is this is a hospital, right? Yeah, that's the medics building. Right. It's like they're about to lay a parking lot around that as well too so all of this area is coming together really nicely and uh you know everything that was a part of the tracking station is completely gone at this point and you know this whole area looks completely different than what it did about a year ago it would actually yeah, be cool to think about it to have more restaurants potentially back here that'd be cool but yeah it's crazy you look at this now and it's as if there was just never a tracking station and a solar farm you yeah. This is pretty much all the evidence of it is just gone. 
Agreed. All right, well, let's touch on some questions and then we will go over to the launch site. All right, just got one in from Beamed. Uh, do you think the original idea was to connect the Star Factory to the office building and that the design may have changed to due to the plot of land that is not SpaceX's? Um, um, uh, you go first, sir. I don't know. Um, I, I, it doesn't look like it was planning to come anywhere near that, but I, I guess with, with where this is right now, the edge of the building, it is possible that once they have access to this, that it could all come all the way up to the edge right here. But um, I don't know. I imagine this being like a, a kind of like a courtyard area up in the front, um, almost like a U-shaped um, drive through right here. So I don't know. I think they may leave this open. But it would be interesting for the factory to actually come all the way up against this. Yeah, I don't think they will connect at any point. Um, I don't know. Personally, I just don't see see the point of actually connecting the two the two buildings like that. Um, and yeah, like I said, the shape of it, it, it doesn't look like it's ever actually going to go any further towards the factory. So yeah, I think this, that's my take on it. I think it's going to remain as two separate buildings. All right. A uh, question from Luke Pinka. Any flyover shots of the commercial district? I guess the new shopping center being constructed? Uh, I believe mean, um, so. Let me check really really quick. Yeah, we did have at least one photo of that from what I can remember. It's not this one. Let's see. Yeah, spoiler alert, it's not much to look at just yet. It's still just just uh, yeah, it hasn't changed. I can see. I don't see an image of it here. Oh wait. Here it is. Yeah, so still just doing groundwork. Um not much like Jake said, not much to show. Yeah, I think they're still pretty much in the whole dewatering process of getting all the water out of that area before they really start doing anything else. Although I do see a bit of an L shape along the right hand side. Maybe they are preparing to do some sort of foundations there. Huh? Yeah, it could be. I think that this is just an, a large pile of dirt right here and this is kind of they're slowly removing that pile of dirt around the edges right there. Uh, any other questions, Joe? Yeah, for sure. Uh, Andy Adler asking, uh, you mentioned the tracking station. What? Any idea what happened to the dishes? Uh, no idea. Completely gone by the looks of it. We've never seen them um, appear anywhere else. They Seems to just be totally a thing of the past now. Yep, for sure. All right. Um, let's see. That's pretty relevant. Uh, TJ Moore asking, will a solar farm be atop the factory? I think we get that question every episode. And uh, as of right now, we don't know. But, I mean, obviously, this is a very large building. So... It uh, couldn't hurt to have one up there. You know, having some sort of renewable energy is definitely helpful. Um, but uh, yeah, we they have obviously not started it yet. But I imagine once this building is complete, it may they may end up doing that. Um, but um, it's tough to say right now. Yeah, I'd like to see um, a solar farm on there once they've completed it. I think that'd be pretty cool. All right, I've got a nice segue with a super chat from Tony Z. Do we think there's going to be a water deluge plate on the second orbital launch mount? Um, uh, that's a tricky one right now. Because um, obviously, if you look at LC39 here, they did just pull all the legs down for the launch mount there. So there may be a big redesign on the card. But I don't know. We don't really know for sure exactly what to expect 
you know, really all we know right now is they're dewatering and they want to get that strip of land in between because it's just too soon to tell what they're going to do with the amount of changes they've been making to other locations and what they've learned. But we will definitely be watching it closely to see what they looks like they're going to do as they get more and more done with it. All right, let's proceed with launch site. Cool. And yeah, I guess... Um, as Jake briefly mentioned, um, you know, they have been doing a lot of work at the Pad 39A site, but uh, not necessarily the work that people were expecting to see. So we know that they've started to demolish the legs of the um, that second, or I guess you could say the first Starship launch site at Pad 39A. Um, and I think as of right now, there's like two legs still standing. So um <laughs> a lot of people when they started taking them down were like oh are they going to go with three legs instead of six and i don't think that was ever really uh a real option but yeah it looks like they're completely reconstructing that pad as far as the actual launch mount area um which makes sense because the foundation of that launch pad was um under supported in my opinion so the what they've done with the launch pad over here at um starbase you know as far as completely redoing the actual foundation of this they were going to have to do that same work down there um but uh it's much easier to do it before putting the legs in the ground um because of the fact that they they had to break out all of the horizontal tension bands between the legs in order to do this um and they would have had to break those apart down there too which i don't know if it's easy to do when you don't have the ring on top that's holding all of these um, legs together and keeping them in position. So the uh, when you take out the structure in between that actually attaches them together without having something on top of it to, to um, keep them from moving, I guess, I think it makes sense that they ended up having to just completely demolish it and restart over again. Um, but on that note, I think that we're probably going to end up seeing uh, a very different design here. Um, and I think the question still remains on where it's going to go. So obviously we do have the groundwork that they've been doing over here as far as installing all of the drainage. Um, so they've completely, they did all of that, uh, their, the drilling rigs right here, installing the, what are they called, the wick drains? I don't know what the proper word for them is. Yeah, drainage wicks. Um, that's, that's, yeah, that's pretty much the correct idea. But correct name for that. Yeah, and I guess the question is, um, if the actual pad is coming here in this specific area or not. Um, so I guess something that I've been wondering, um, it would be difficult to install drainage underneath where, the, where you're actually going to construct the tower, but doing it adjacent to the tower so that as you're putting weight on the area where it's going to be, you'd potentially be pushing water up from the surrounding areas. So I don't know if this is just a drainage, um, uh, passive draining system over time so that they can slowly prepare the ground, or if this is something that's going to be set up, that's set up specifically for the purpose of continuing to drain this area as they're constructing, possibly like over here instead. Um, but as of right now, they, uh, as I said, finished up all the drainage over here, and now they've started drilling in this area as well, too. Um, so I imagine that Pretty soon, we may see them actually build up the ground in between this um, and connect these two areas. But uh, I'm actually surprised they haven't done that already. Yeah, I believe there was obviously there was um, a comment period for that bit of land there. To, and I'm pretty sure that comment period's actually ended now. Um, so I guess we're just waiting to hear if the next steps to see if you know if there's any objections to it or not. Um, hopefully there was no objections, hopefully. Um, so they could just get going with that sooner, but yeah, I guess anything's possible. Yeah. Overall, I think we have a lot of time left for, for this construction work. I mean, as far as just the foundation goes, um, I was expecting to possibly see them really start on the foundation for the next launch, but I, I don't think we'll see any more groundwork other than what they're currently doing until after Flight 4. So, yeah, I, I imagine they'll probably be um, near June before we actually see them really start the foundation. And uh, I don't know, I think possibly what the big holdup 
with this is, is not only that comment period that they're currently waiting on the results for that, but also for the static fire stand at Massey's to be completed. Um, because once that is completed, they can remove pretty much all of this stuff down here. So that I think is probably a big limiting factor on um, getting all of this started is being able to remove this and the entire tank farm. Um, but I guess there's not a ton else to really talk about down in this area, unless y'all have something you wanted to add. No, I think, no, I think um, we're yeah, we're good. Yeah, I think we pretty much touch base on everything in our area for the time being. Um, so moving over to the tank farm, they are continuing to uh, slowly transition this. So um, I, again, this is something that's going to happen over multiple launches. Um, right now, I think they're getting closest to finishing up with the nitrogen tanks. Um, so it was tough to determine what was what initially, but I think we know enough now to say that these ones in the middle are the nitrogen tanks, which makes the most sense. Um, so right now with the way that these pipes are routed to, so you can see that connected to each one of these tanks goes into these two lines right here. And I think these may be potentially supply and return for these tanks because there's um, multiple lines coming off. Uh, sorry, there's lines going to each of these tanks coming off of both of these two main lines. Um, and these extend down in front right here. One of them turns into this area, which um, in my opinion really only makes sense if this is for nitrogen because um, you already have your methane set up, so it doesn't really make sense to turn an oxygen line in this direction. But you do need to supply nitrogen to both the kettle boilers on um, on over here and on this side as well, too. So these pipes, uh, the second line is, I think, stops right here currently, um, but will obviously continue down to the front of this side, which is where they're going to need to uh, supply nitrogen for these kettle boilers. Um, so I guess once that is complete, I would say like, as far as the construction goes in phases, we'll probably see, um, these nitrogen, sorry, these nitrogen tanks come online after the next launch. I can't really imagine them finishing it before that, but it is possible. Um, but once those are completed, then these two nitrogen tanks will be able to be removed. And I think... Um, uh, I doubt they'll be able to move this water tank yet. Um, but if we look on the other side, um, so this is pretty interesting. I'm sure if y'all have been watching this over the past few weeks, you've already seen these. I'm going to try and get another shot of it, uh, maybe with a little less shade. Um, but right now, actually, this is probably the best we're going to get. Um, so they, the, there's two water lines down here. One of them is a supply, uh, sorry, supply coming this direction and the other is a return. And so there's pipes going on top of these tanks, um, which appears to be uh, water return lines, which is interesting. Um, I, I say it's interesting because I don't know why they would need a return system anymore. So um, before they were cycling the water through the tanks and through a, um, it's called a pressure building system inside of this building where they're basically using the water to vaporize um, cryogenics and so they can backfill these tanks as they're pulling liquid out of them. Um, but uh, I'm not sure why they need a recircula recircula recirculatory system for this current setup, but that is what it looks like right now. So um, I think these this return line is going both to these tanks and the big tank back here, and also the supply on the other side of this, let me see if I can get a shot on the other side. Um, here we go. Yeah, so you have the water line coming around right here, and it's tough to say whether or not it goes underneath these tanks, because there is a little black area right here, which I believe there may be another pipe coming off of, but it's tough to see. Actually, I don't think it is there. 
Um, but yeah, so this these water tanks, I believe, um, but we're, we're, it's tough to say for sure right now, but these should replace the um, their water needs for the actual Firex and detonation suppression system on the launch mount. Um, so they won't need as much water as they had before since they'll have a different um, system for actually maintaining pressure in these tanks. So I think these may be all of the water supply that they need for the actual um, the uh, fire suppression system on the launch mount. I'm going to try and get another shot on the backside again. There we go. Um, but yeah, so they have two additional tanks over here. Not 100% sure what those are for yet. I'm probably going to have to wait until we get some good images showing all the pipe work. Once this is complete, it'll be a lot easier to see. Unless they uh, cover it up like they did with this manifold and stuff down here. Um, but yeah, as far as that phased construction goes, um, I, like I said, with each launch, I think we'll see them bring different sections of this online. But I don't know if they'll actually finish this next area that they're doing before this uh, coming launch. If so, I think it may not be as close as we think it is um, because there's a lot of work to get it to the point where the uh, they're no longer using these two nitrogen tanks, I think. Uh, let's see. Anything else in this area y'all wanted to mention? Yeah, I think you covered that pretty well. Yeah, I say you covered it well. Yeah, this looks pretty crazy right now. I think uh, another interesting thing that I noticed down here is that what we were expecting is an additional methane tank. They have not connected that to anything yet. It looks like it's just still sitting there by itself. Um, so that's interesting. Kind of expecting this There's to be joined with these. But the one thing I can notice is they have actually added a platform right in front of that tank. So I'm not yeah. sure how long it's been there, but they might start plumbing it in at some point soon, maybe. Yeah, it's weird that it has its own containment. So I do wonder if this is something else entirely and not part of the methane system. But uh, with the end of these pipes right here kind of ending the way they do, I imagine that this is meant to join with the other methane tanks. Um, but yeah, and on the, the note of the platforms, they do have them going across right here, uh, which is interesting. It's tough to say whether or not there are only three nitrogen tanks or if there's actually four of them. Um, I would expect this platform to continue down here with the other tank. And uh, actually, with the way this pipe extends right here, I think it might be safe to say that this is also a nitrogen tank. Um, yeah, there was another little change, obviously, since the last flyover. I think, yeah, we had two, another two big vaporizers delivered as well. Um, so it's likely going to be three big vaporizers on the new embeds in front of the last two uh, hot dog tanks. So basically to the right of those two vertical tanks, um, yeah, we did see embeds there uh, for three vaporizers. And yeah, I guess it's going to be the three big ones. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, in that case, it almost looks like these are nitrogen tanks as well. And um, potentially, instead of pulling liquid from these tanks, vaporizing it, and then sending it back, they may have separate tanks just for that purpose, um, which kind of simplifies things a little bit if that's the case. Um, so you, we may see, I guess, the, these vaporizers down here, which means that maybe we shouldn't expect to see them inside of this area of the tank farm. I know that they still have the they still have the ones underneath the tanks back here. It's tough to see them. Yeah. Yeah, they're still um, down yeah. there. And yeah, we're still looking up that end as well. It is worth mentioning that there does seem to be pipe work appearing on the wall behind those tanks. Yeah, you can see yeah. some bracketry. It goes along there. Uh, you might go so from the wall. Angle. Yeah, you go yeah, around the very back wall. Yeah, so something goes all the way to the end of those tanks. Very last of them. There's some. They've got bracketry going on those walls. Um, they've been working on that this last week. Yeah, that's interesting because I guess my big question is what's going to happen to 
the cryo offloading area, um, I feel like it's been eliminated up here. So, um, with no, the so way that with, yeah, if, uh, I don't. Yeah, we haven't really got a ground shot. There is actually um, cryo hoses coming off the solid pipework, or from the new pipework. So it does. Like the the, the off, yeah, so it does seem like the offload points are still staying down there. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking with these racks back here, they could use this area right here as a big offload area, um, and also down in here. But um, it's tough to tell. It's not to say they won't have two areas for offloading. We do know those tankers are sitting in line sometimes to offload, so we wouldn't more offload sites would make that faster replenishing of. Uh, Fluids. Right. Also, they have barely started the plumbing on the last five tanks, too. They haven't gotten far along, but they have started. There was nothing last week that I could recall. Um, so they have started to do a step more there. Yeah, these are interesting. It almost looks like they go underground, but I don't think there is any underground pipework down here. So this must just be like a valve manifold. I actually, I wonder if these are pumps. So if there's a pump on each LOX tank. Yeah, I think from what I can remember, there is pumps on those goods. Yeah, I wonder if uh, anybody got pictures of these as they were being delivered. That would be nice. I have to look through some older imagery to see if I can find some of that. Or potentially even just to see through here at this one on the ground level might be able to tell. Um, but yeah, with the distance that these are from the LOX tanks um, and the fact that they they don't have the head pressure from it being a super tall tank like this, I imagine they would need pumps for these to um, actually pump the liquid oxygen over to these uh, larger pumps on this side. So um, definitely something that I was expecting to see for a while. Um, and I'm surprised they don't have them on. I wonder if they have them on the nitrogen tanks as well too they could be part of these manifolds down here yeah i'm pretty sure there is the same things under those tanks um i remember the seeing them right at the start before any of the tanks were actually bought in and put on the pedestals there all right all right well uh i guess maybe that kind of ties up all of the orbital tank farm stuff it's Really, uh, I could probably look at this for hours because it's amazing how much it's changed. Um, I think one thing that I, I know they're not going to do, but it'd be cool to see, is if they actually put a massive cover over the top of this. Um, but, uh, you know, that's just getting my hopes up. Well, and there was one tiny other little thing before we go over to the orbital pad. They did, um, I know people saw a lot of concrete being dug up the other day and then report. It's that little square at the back of the launch site for anyone wondering where that new concrete went. If you look to the right, yeah, right by there. Not sure why that was done. Because um, obviously to the left of that is where the booster holding pad is. Uh, maybe there was just some of the ground there was just starting to give away. So maybe it's just a little repair job, possibly. Yeah, I imagine this probably doesn't look as smooth on the ground level as it does from up here. So uh, probably potentially add cracks in that or something. Um, I'm also surprised they haven't deleted the uh, the booster stand location right here. All right, well, shall we move on to the actual launch pad then? So over the... Uh, past few weeks they've been slowly getting their reconditioning work for the actual launch mount and uh we do know that they removed those cryo tubes um last week and over the last few days they've reinstalled the flex hoses going into the back of the booster cutie and as of this morning they also reinstalled the rear cover on that so definitely getting one step closer to actually being able to return to testing um man i will say that it's just crazy how uh, roasted this looks in comparison to the last launch. Um, man, I, I do expect to see a lot of changes with the actual top surface of this when they construct the new one. 
Um, but what we haven't seen, from what I can tell, they haven't cut any of these panels off, which is a good thing. Um, so it doesn't look like they're actually resurfacing the top of this at all, even though um, it definitely looks way more roasted than it did last time. So I would say if once we see the scaffolding come down, we'll know when they're getting closer to uh, having Booster 11 come out for its static fire testing. Um, so beyond that, oh, go ahead. Just saying, I'm pretty sure we saw the Raptor disconnect hoses being replaced too. Um, they were coming in truckloads at a time for the other hoses. Oh, was that this week or last week? Oh, that was this week. Yeah, it was about two, uh, well, about a week and a half ago, there was a load of red hoses seen being taken out from the top of that staircase on the all them. Um, and then a few days ago, there was a load of black hoses then seen being taken into the launch ring. Yeah, I was wondering if they had a box holding all of those down here. But I don't see anything. Oh, that, those are them. Those are the um, hoses. Those are the yeah, ones that were right seen there. being take, taken in to the, in, into the top of the staircase. So these would be the hoses that come from the uh, back wall and then down to the QDs themselves? That's what we're thinking. Yeah. That is a lot of work having to replace that stuff. After, oh, you can see some on the uh, lift right here as well, too. They definitely hadn't prepared, though, by the time having from the when they launched to having them here on the site. I think they already knew ahead of time that they're going to be right now replacing them every launch um, until they come up with something that protects them better, keeps them safe better. They, they just automatically start making new ones before they even launch, so they're ready to go. Yeah, it's interesting um, that they have to be replaced at all. I mean, it seems like all of the flex hoses have been replaced at each launch. Um, uh it's weird to me because I would expect them to receive more damage during static fire tests than the actual launch itself, um, given that they actually retract back into the table during a launch versus during a static fire test, they remain exposed. Um, so it's interesting that they you know, are able to survive static fire testing, but not launches. I would love to know what's actually going on with that one day. I was talking about that with someone um, last week, and I think what, in my opinion, is what's happening is when you're doing a static fire, all the thrust is below and being pushed out. But once you start lifting off the stand, it's finding cracks to get inside there that's above the QDs and everywhere else. So where you're normally just getting pressure waves, now you're getting pressure waves and heat that is, is creeping in from the top somewhere. That, that was what we were kind of talking towards. Yeah, it would, I mean, it's weird, though, with the because these um, are shielded. They're shielded hoses. And there's a lot of electrical stuff on the inside of here as well, too. So it's interesting that only the hoses would be damaged and not any of the electrical components on the components on the inside. Um, as far as we know, like we don't we don't know if they've been replacing electrical stuff, but uh, as far as we know, they haven't. So um, it's very interesting the things that do and don't have to be replaced between each launch. Yeah, I definitely agree with you on that one. And uh, I believe they've also been doing work on the top of the chopsticks as well, right? Yeah, yeah so lots of conduit work, replacements, hoses, lines. Um, sure to, uh, Jake, if you know anything else up there. But yeah, they have been doing a lot of work up there. Yeah, I can't remember who said it, but so someone did mention the other day that it seems like the conduit on the chopsticks is being routed in a slightly different direction now. Because obviously during the last launch, there was conduit just thrown off the side of the chopsticks. So I guess maybe they're hoping this new route changes it for the next launch. Um, they don't seem to have started in reinstalling walkway sections yet. They're just using wooden boards by the looks of it. But uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll see the walkway sections return in time for the next flight. And hopefully they're fastened down a lot better this time and don't get thrown everywhere again. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would love to see some shielding on the chopsticks eventually. It, it almost yeah, seems think, like it's necessary. Yeah, I think for the top of the chopsticks, it will, it'll definitely be a good idea. I think, but on the sides of it, on the sides of the chopsticks, 
it would probably be better to leave it off, shielding off there, because obviously they can then start acting like sales if you've got solid sides to these chopsticks. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, with all the lessons that they've learned, it's going to be very interesting what we see with the next version of this. Um, I mean, we do know that they've already finished the second pair, or the I guess their third pair of chopsticks, um, as far as the actual structure of them themselves. But uh, I do think we'll probably end up seeing changes to how they install all the mechanical stuff up here in order to protect it a little bit more. Yeah. Um, and there's, yeah, the other things that we observed over the past week is they've been inspecting the steel panels on the tower base. Um, and they was someone seen inspecting one of the skates for the carriage as well. Yeah, they've sort of been, they've been over quite a few things since the last launch. Um, and there was a ground photo. I, I don't think we can share on this on the stream. Um, but it was noticed in this ground photo that the base of one of the legs, the all M legs on, on the diverter, that it looked like the steel had actually melted during the last launch, and you could see ripples in the steel. Yeah, I saw that too. It's those are it's amazing how what the pressure waves and heat did to those uh shielding panels. So I'm not surprised you're doing more inspections throughout the other everything else. Yeah. Um, hopefully, maybe soon we'll have some ground shots, maybe in the coming weeks. Um, I know it's been a little bit difficult to do both flyovers and ground shots lately, but uh, yeah, that would be cool to get some updated ground shots of that so we can see what they're doing. I mean, I would imagine if that's the case that uh, it's maybe not surprising that the water doesn't protect the legs as much as the actual base, but I do wonder um, if we see that kind of wear on the legs, like what's actually happening to the plate. Um, I mean, I, I would, I can only imagine that just simply based on what Gwyn Shotwell and Elon have said, as far as how many launches they want to get done this year, that, that, uh, the estimate takes into account anywhere that they're currently experiencing on this. So if, you know, there is some sort of wear and damage on the plate, they are at least expecting to get five more launches out of it. Um, but, uh, you know, that's just speculation on whether or not it's holding up that well. Um, I mean, it's just crazy how roasted all of this stuff is, but also, I guess, to be expected. Um, uh, I mean, I, I think it's good that it's held up for two launches, at least, so far. I mean, it's better than what we saw after IFT1, that's for sure. Definitely. <laughs> baby steps. We'll take those baby steps. All right, so uh, Joe, did we have any uh, questions at the launch site that we needed to touch on? Yeah, I got a few, uh, but I want to thank uh, Smurf Trooper for gifting a membership and Alan McKeithen for a $5 super chat. Awesome show as always. Happy Easter all, he says. Thank you, Alan. Appreciate your support. Uh, Paul, any has a statement more than a question. Perhaps the new table legs will be higher. Your thoughts? Too soon to tell for me. It's just too soon. Yeah, I got pretty much the same view on that. Yeah, I mean, it, it could be, it, it certainly couldn't hurt having them higher. Um, the problem with raising them is uh, at that point, then it may become necessary to have a taller base on the, the tower. Um, but I don't know. Uh, you know, getting getting the booster higher off the ground probably could help, but I mean, the fact is that you know the the flame and the exhaust plume is like 900 feet long, so there's not a ton you could do to really improve how much pressure is reaching the ground. Um, but I guess anything is better than 16 meters if you can get it slightly higher. But uh, I don't know if it is taller. I would imagine that the legs would be wider as well too, the base of the legs, so that. Um, you know, it they it, it extends further out from the circle of where the outer twenty engines are hitting the ground. Um, I think the further out you can get the legs from that area, the better. So it is certainly possible that we may end up seeing that. All right. 
Question from James Howard. Where is the second stage zero at Starbase going to go? We know a rough location. Um, it's where they're doing the dewatering on the other side of the, yeah, so right in the top left area there. Well, this whole area is going to become orbital part B, but the exact location of the tower and the OLM for that next loan, uh, orbital part, we don't really know yet. Missing tools question. When do the engine chill breakaway flex hoses get replaced? After every launch. Yeah, every launch for now. And hopefully we'll see something different on the next uh, OLM. And then they can, as they modify and change the f first launch site, they will then be able to correct that because that just does not seem like a fast uh, process to do no matter what everything could be worked out but if you still have to replace those every single time that that's a lot of time taken up yeah i mean right now it's not too much of a concern with obviously this lower launch cadence but when that cadence picks up and when there's going to start needing to be you know fast turnaround times then yeah they're going to have to come up with a totally different system eh? all right uh, Brian Murphy, question, Flame Trench a la Massey's like for second OLM? We don't know for sure, um, but what I will say is I wouldn't totally rule it out. I mean, we're now looking at a Flame Trench for the upper stage of Starship, so anything's possible, that is my opinion on that. Yeah, yeah. I'm can agree. I mean, at this point, it couldn't hurt. Um, obviously, I, I think it would have to be designed a lot differently in order to fit a flame trench underneath it. Um, and I imagine that the length of it would have to be a lot longer and deeper than what they have for the one at Massey's. Um, I mean, uh, I feel like that would be a huge thing, like having to admit defeat when it comes to not doing that in the first place. And, you know, I still think they're going to try and do everything possible to not have to do that. Um, but uh, I don't know. Maybe it's a lot of, maybe it's too much speculation. Like, we don't know if this is currently still working for them right now or if it's just, you know, getting them through where they are currently. Um, yeah, I, I, I would like to see that they're able to just repeat this on the next launch mount. But, um you know, it is definitely a, a possibility that we'll see something completely different for the uh, in in place of what they have here. All right, and a good question from Spherical Cow, which I also would like to know: any idea what the scaffolding on the ground southeast of the OLM is for? Um, so all that scaffolding. Yeah, I know they're talking about it's yeah, that's scaffold in that area. Um it's all on wheels and they've been using that to inspect the welds on the insides of the all M legs. Ah, excellent. That is cool. I did not know that. That is the last question, and anything else that I have is now clear. Awesome. Well, once again, it was great to be on the show this week. Uh, kind of sucked being gone for close to a month and a half, almost two months. Um, but I was glad I was able to make it on here. And thanks to Jake and Todd for joining us. And obviously, Astro Joe for handling all the questions and donations. Um, and I uh, hope to be here with you all next week. I think I should be. I'm still doing some work, kind of getting set up on my side. I was able to get my new office set up. Uh, in time to be able to do this show, but I still got a lot more to do. So, um, you know, trying to uh, do all of that while potentially getting another episode out within the next month or so. Um, it's definitely been quite the process. So, uh, like I said, glad I was able to actually make it this week and uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll be joining you guys next week. Yeah, it's been uh, good having you back, Zach. And obviously uh, hearing your opinions and all the things visible in these photos. And yeah, we're looking forward to seeing you back again next week.
Yeah, definitely. Always great to have you back, Zach. I know I learn more every time I talk with you and listen with you, so I do appreciate you being here. And thanks again, Mauricio, for these flights and these shots. Uh, we know some of us know what you go through to get them and really, really appreciate all the hard work you do for these. Thanks for having me, everybody, and uh, everybody have a great weekend. And, yeah, thanks for having me back as well, everyone. It's, uh, it's been fun. And, yeah, I'll probably possibly see you on for the next live stream. And, uh, yeah, with that, I'll hand it back over to Joe. All right. Thanks, Zach. Jake, Todd, appreciate your time and uh, knowledge and sharing your wisdom with everybody. Uh, thanks, Emlyn, for turning the knobs and pushing the buttons. Thanks, RGV team, for getting these awesome photos. Thanks, uh, my lovely wife, Astro Jen, for uh, scheduling everybody and rounding everybody up. With that said, most engines cut off, hot staging confirmed. Love you, bye.